This is Go Powercat publisher Tim Fitzgerald, and we appreciate you listening to the Powercat podcast. You can now subscribe to our podcast with iTunes, Stitcher, and Spotify, among many others. Or you can just come to gopowercat.com and use the megaphone.fm player. And remember, K-State fans, you can get 30% off an annual subscription to gopowercat.com. Complete, independent, professional coverage of Kansas State sports. With analysis and commentary, you will find nowhere else. Now here's the Power Cat Podcast. The following is a Spirit Street production. You've discovered your link to the Power Cat Podcast, presented by Fridge Wholesale Liquor. It's the Power Cat Podcast. And now, let's go to the Spirit Street Studios. Here's your host, Go Power Cat publisher, Tim Fitzgerald. Welcome to another summer edition of the Power Cat Podcast. We have removed Marcus Watts from the premises. We're back to our old trio. Thank God. Our familiar trio. There's nothing old about them. There's only old about me. Tim Fitzgerald, Riley Hawaii Gates, <laughs> and uh, Zach about soccer Carlson. We got a soccer question in the podcast just for you, Zach. Thank you. Oh God. I feel like having if we were doing like the overtime with all the stuff, we'd like do a a news update sounder. We we'll go to our soccer correspondent. Do 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 do. Like that. It's very exciting. Great questions from Wabash Station. We got football. We got some basketball. We got questions about facilities and other odds and ends at the end of two segment two and then we go into the overtime not a lot of fun questions but some interesting questions including about a certain running back so who, basically who will be eligible this year oh sorry so basically every time you ask the questions you get a lot of good insightful sports questions and i'm really good at gathering questions in regards to ridiculousness we need a balance here so we should both ask questions. <laughs> give me your questions. You give Riley your questions and see how it works out. Appreciate everyone participating. I appreciate everyone listening to the podcast over the holidays. Uh, the 4th of July was our busiest day in terms of downloads in site history, or not site history, since we moved to Megaphone, which is like six <laughs> weeks ago. <laughs> so in month and a half history. Yeah. But it was a really big day, which tells me uh, you guys are damn fine Americans for listening to the Powercat podcast. Appreciate that very much. Think of how many people sitting in their pool, sitting in their backyard, whatever, at the lake, listen to your voice while enjoying the 4th of July. Man, I hope. I mean, they could have listened to patriotic music. They could have listened to country music. Literally any kind of music out there that probably would have made a lot of sense on the 4th of July. But they listen to the Powercat podcast. Maybe I should do Stuart Smalley. Is that his name? The personal affirmation things. You are a damn fine Kansas State fan. You are a good K-State fan. Hypnotize people while they yeah. go to sleep. I see an ad. <laughs> Affirmations from Fitz. Go, cats. Go. <laughs> Subscribe to Go Power Cat. 30% off your first year. Perfect ad put right there. <laughs> nice. We are sponsored by the Fridge Wholesale Liquor. Get into the Fridge. Fourth of July is over. They still have alcohol. No matter how hard you try, they don't run out. Well, they might run out for you know a few days if you try hard enough, but they always get more. It's it's amazing. They just keep making this stuff, no matter how much you consume it. It's actually better for them to make more. So get into the fridge, huge selection of any kind of liquor, wine, beer, puppies you want. Puppies? Yeah, just might have stretched the battery. That might be false advertising. Might be false, I don't have puppies that I know of. Unless I got a black market puppy thing going on out of the, like where they bring the kegs out. You can actually go in there and see some puppies. Go to the cashier register and ask to see their puppies. No. <laughs> God. Uh, man arrested at fridge <laughs> showing his puppies. I yeah, go. Yeah, let's not do that. I leave for one week. <laughs> Get into Tanner's. Well, I hope you went to Tanner's to watch soccer. Man, that that's a good soccer venue right there. It's I've, I bet it was crazy. 
I bet you it wasn't. Did they even open early for the? Yeah. The game? Oh, I, I forgot know. it was early. It was, yeah. I don't want to spoil the end of the question, but the timing didn't really work too well for me. Uh-huh. I'd always, I always, I never thought of it. It was a weird time. Yeah, we can get to that. So, we got some great questions. Let's just jump right in. As I mentioned, uh, we're sponsored by The Fridge and Tanners, and we're sitting in here in the WTC Gig Powered Studios. And here's our MC, Zach. From Ricky Tiki Tavi, what is your biggest area of concern for the upcoming season and the new coaching staff, and what are you most excited for? Is it too easy to say just the jump? I mean, facing mm-hmm. that tough comp. I think you've said it really well a lot of times. They're used to be- beating a Power 5 opponent right. once, not 12 times. The grind, yeah. yeah. But me- and it will have a mental grind on the coaches. It will. I mean, I know, I know they didn't. It's not like they didn't prepare for the lesser opponents. They did, but everything's new. They're not going to have anything in their back pocket. You know, Coach Snyder would always have a base when going up against a coach that he'd seen before. He kind of knew what was going on, and so did his assistant coaches. So they just don't know. It's, you know, wiping the slate clean. they got to go from the start. Now it's kind of fortunate in some ways that there's three new coaches in the league. So, you know, one-third of their preparations, uh, three other new coaches, one-third of their preparations will, you know, be moot anyhow. They'd have to do it. But I just think the grind – how it works for the team and the coaches is my biggest concern. I'm interested to see the road results this year because, you know, the toughest road environment that these guys coached in, I say these guys, not all 10, but the majority of them that they coached in last year was, you know, like a, a Northern Iowa or South Dakota State. It, you know, they weren't going to, to uh, oh, Norman, were, uh, I guess they're on, not on Texas. the road against, yeah, the Texas, they're on the road. Um, you know, the, all the all the road tests that they have to see this season, they haven't seen environments like that. And maybe it doesn't even matter all that much, honestly. The paddles at Oklahoma State. Oof. To learn about... Uh, I hate those. What if Van Malone <laughs> just rips a paddle out of somebody's hand and starts hitting them with it? I love those paddles. Uh, they're going to learn stuff about their mother at Texas Tech. Yikes. I never knew that about my mother. She did what? <laughs> On what ground do you have that on? They're gonna they're gonna learn that uh, KU fans will be checked out by the time K State gets. Yes, in. that's also true. Well, know. no, they had two on the preseason All Big Twelve fits. Clearly, they have a better team. Well, they had one was a punter because they <laughs> suck, and the punter's really good because he's getting a lot of work. Twitter disagrees. I know. They don't realize that usually the best punter is on the worst team, typically, because they get a lot of work. I don't know. And what was their, their second after that? What are you most excited for? Uh, I just the new. I, you know, you sit next to me in the press box. I'd go, okay, they're going to do this. Okay, they're <laughs> going to do this. And, you know, it, and, and I, that's not unique to me. A lot of people could do that. A lot of fans, as soon as they line up, you know what's coming. You, They just weren't even hiding things anymore. I think it's going to be fun to, you know, have that different plays. Just – not know what's coming, but also different plays and maybe a different approach to defense. I don't know. And along those lines, the offense should be really interesting. A lot like you guys noted on the podcast that I wasn't on, it, you have a defensive minded head coach, which means it's kind of all in the offensive coordinator's mm-hmm. hands now. Mm-hmm. What's it going to look like, you know? The, uh, yeah, Chris Kleiman will probably have some say, I imagine, to an extent, but like it's obviously not going to be as much as Coach Snyder had, um, you know. It, everybody wanted to blame Dana Demel all the time for play calling and things like that. Well, now it actually is all in the hands of Courtney Messingham. Or, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Courtney Messingham. Why did I blame? Why did I think he wasn't the offensive coordinator? Because he's stupid in Hawaii. That's true. Anyways, interested to see how the offense functions with kind of that mindset. Yeah, I, I and I'm looking forward to the all white uniforms that I'm insisting they wear. Oh, I thought you were breaking news. No, I'm just insisting they <laughs> Can wear. Can we it. pause and real quick and write a story? Let's just let's just say this right now. I insist that you have all white uniforms at some point next season, or I will throw a fit. And you don't want to see me throw a fit, or I will eat all the ice cream on the last home game of the season. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's Iowa State, right? Yeah, it's Thanksgiving, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, that weekend. Right. I'll eat all the ice cream, uh, like pre-game. So everyone will come in, and all the media will be mad. Well, that's just – that. It's not very nice. There we go. Give me all white uniforms. Next question. 
from AZCAT05. Looking at the depth chart, we have a lot of seniors at key spots. Is it possible we, we perform better than expected next year and then drop off quite a bit, uh, climb in second year with a very young team on the field? It is possible. That's a good point. And not only that, let's just throw this out. Let's say they do have a really good year. They have a productive year, and Leonard's breaks loose as a tight end, and Skyler really has a big season as a quarterback. Is it possible – Guys like that, I'm not saying they would, would go early. Um, they, they would be graduated and you know, as guys that redshirted. So it could even be more than what you're talking about. It's, it's an intriguing question, and it, it does underscore the urgency with which they're recruiting right now. They know these guys coming up in, uh, you know, that are in the 19 class certainly will be playing uh, two seasons down the road. If you want to talk about, you know, in 2020, but maybe some of those 2020 kids will come in as freshmen and be pushed into duty simply to get their numbers up. And that's why I'm warning people: it's going to take three, four years for them to get the reinforcements in place for this program because there's been so much attrition and the numbers had dropped off so much. And now they've had some guys depart that don't fit in, so the attrition gets, you know, the numbers drop even more. And uh, it's it's going to be a challenge over the next few years to have enough mature bodies to compete in the Big 12. From CCL27, you kind of hinted at it in another podcast, but what would beating Mississippi State and or Oklahoma State mean for the program's momentum and the fan base? I mean, I think Mississippi State's bigger. You go into the SEC and win. Because I've said it a hundred times, maybe 95, maybe I lied, that that loss at Vanderbilt stopped the momentum of the program cold. Oh, yeah. And it would almost be reverse mojo to go to Starkville and win against a more respected program than the Commodores. I mean, they're, they're named after a 70s, 80s singing group. So I think that's weird. The Commodores. It's just a weird mascot. Fair. They got Lionel, a guy dressed up as Lionel Richie on the sideline. It's really very really strange. Uh, but going to Mississippi State and winning after losing at home to them last year, well, I think would ignite the fans. Now, you know, going to Stillwater the next week and losing might take a little wind out of people's sails. But... It's be nice. It, it proves that you did. Now, one game, one way or another, does not mean that Chris Kleiman was the right hire. Like it, it if he loses, Zach cancel the statue. <laughs> Crap, <laughs> we did that. I did that. I'm sorry. I mean, if he lost to KU, you'd be upset. But I mean, that doesn't mean oh, we made the wrong hire. It, it just means you know, it's one game is one game. So I don't mean to put too much stock into a win over. Mississippi State, but if you could go on the road with this team and win at an SEC program, I think it says a lot about your ability as a coach and it proves that you were the right hire because I'll be frank, let's say Coach Schneider and this old staff had stayed for this year, I'd take Mississippi State plus the points. And I don't even know what the line is right Mm now. And I think that while I'll still probably end up picking Mississippi State in that game when the time comes, I think K-State probably has a decent chance. Maybe that's just me being overly optimistic, but I think they might have a chance. Well, I'll give it this. <clears throat> After games against Nichols and Bowling Green, they should be 2-0. If they're not, we got a whole different issue to talk about. <laughs> but we're talking – we just talked about that. We've got a head coach and a significant number of coaches who are aware of how to prepare for one big game on the road and win that game. They always won that game. When they stepped into a Power Five, not Power Five, a FBS program. Maybe it is Power Five now. Think about it. They always won. So he knows how to get the team ready, both schematically and mentally. And maybe he can apply that to the Mississippi State game. Or maybe it's, you know, again, reverse mojo and Nichols State comes in with that magic. So we'll see. But uh, I'd just like to point out since you said you were Frank, Frank's kind of. A jerk when it comes to things. Pick a Mississippi State. From Hurt as Joe. From Hurt as Joe. Winning will cure all, but how does the athletic department gain buy in if we get a five and seven or so season? Is progress and competitiveness enough? Oh, that is a good question. That's a great question. And I honestly. I don't know. I don't know. 
Because you can't – right now they're pushing win the dang day every other day on social media. and You can't lose seven great. of the days. <laughs> <laughs> you only get 12 days. Fix the dang day. <laughs> oh, man. Win more <sighs> dang days than you lose. I don't I, – I'd hate uh, to not answer the question, but I don't have an answer because I'm not that person. <laughs> You just got to, I guess. You I, in all honesty, videos. I don't know if there's any level of marketing that can overcome losses. When, you're, when your fan base is used to winning, when you just excuse a legendary coach for being 5-7, and seven, coming in and going 5-7, and seven, would just kind of feel, eh, it's a hard sell. And I'd get it emotionally. Fans are fanatics. They're not always reasonable. So I can I can hear people go, why do we change coaches over five and seven? Coach Snyder, you know I can hear that. That was a good impression of him, by the way. <laughs> uh, so I I don't know if there is a way to convince the base as a whole that hey, it's going to get better. Particularly in light of the earlier question, Frank, when they talked about is he still Frank? <laughs> I'd uh, like to go back to being me now. Okay, uh, when they talked about the drop off, that it was a great. Great point. They drop off a lot in terms of the number of seniors they'll lose after this season, and they really could have a, tw- a tough 2020. I think it, honestly, it probably falls into Chris Kleiman's hands mm-hmm. after that because he's probably then got to go out on on the, the Catbacker Tour and, and do videos and basically say without saying, I know we sucked, but just give it time, you know, and try to paint it in a fancy way because he's probably the only person that they're going to listen to at that point. I think it, it falls into his hands, unfortunately, and and that would be something that they have to figure out how to pitch that. Maybe the the 2020 uh, billboards will be hashtag have a five year deal. Or just <laughs> just give it time. Just or, give it time. Please come back. They go five and seven, but they looked really cool because they had new uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> we might have lost, but we looked really good out there. <laughs> From Cliff Clavin, 754, should we be more worried about safety or cornerback this fall? I you should always corner. be worried about safety. should drive not too fast. I'm really worried about corner. I wish you guys could see Fitz's face when he says something <laughs> like that, because I always know when he's about to give a serious answer and when he's about to give a joking answer. <laughs> I'm really worried about corner. Yeah. But they don't have a dude. You got Denzel Goolsby, who isn't. I feel a, like he's a safety and a half. Uh, he's how smart he is. Yeah, he's he's just a natural leader. So you you've got that sitting back there. And honestly, I'm gonna say it. It's easier to be a safety than a corner in the Big Twelve. Yeah, corners might as well dressed up as toast because that's what happens to them a lot. Even the best ones. Yeah, DJ you know. Reed got burned a lot. Yep. Duke Shelley got burned a lot. Uh-huh. Look, you've been you've been okay for the last four or five years because you had. You know, you had Duke when he came on as a freshman was really, really good, and he kind of covered up for the the struggles on that defense. When DJ came in, he was a monster, and he obviously, you know, you, you had you had DJ and Duke, which is like, okay, that's amazing because if if Duke's your second best option there, you're you're doing pretty good. And then it falls down to Duke again, which you're like, okay, you have Duke and AJ's kind of coming on. But with AJ, I like AJ Parker's game, and I think he's going to take that step forward this season. I think he's going to be a reliable cornerback, but I'm not sure he's going to be a dude. And honestly, I could see four or five different people, maybe not four or five, I could see like two or four different players kind of stepping in and being that other corner this year, honestly. So. I'm really concerned about that position for a lot of the reasons you said. It's a position that gets attacked a lot, and you just don't have a guy that you can be 100% certain you can rely on. And, again, we're talking about coaches that haven't you – know, Van Malone has, but a coordinator who hasn't coached at this level and seen the advanced pyrotechnics of the Big 12, the complexity of what they do offensively. You know, a spread offense is fine if you're running it with four or six guys. It's different than when you got a four or three guy out there. Uh, it, you know, you can't, it's not only more difficult to cover a man, it's impossible to get help there sometimes because they're just too fast. So it's it's going to be a learning curve for the coaches and, and how to do it. But I am worried about corner. From Purple Poncho Via and Fitz 
pulled the questions today, and he spelled via wrong. That's great. I, via. I spell it. You spelled it via. <laughs> well, it, via. Is via. <laughs> it is via. <laughs> I, I just was typing out the names and pasting the questions. And <laughs> Fair enough. I looked at that and I go, that is a rhyme. That's screw it. That's how you pronounce it, but not how it looks. Uh, we can all agree that the overall health of this team will be crucial. Which position unit will be most affected if a starter goes down? Justin Hughes is off the table, and you can't pick him. I'm going to say I corner. I can say four different places. But here. I'm going to say corner because I feel like I just want them to get two guys that are good. Yeah. And if they get hurt, then you got to find a third or a fourth guy that's good. And that I don't know if this team has four guys that are capable of becoming Big 12 level corners if injuries hit. I want to rule quarterback out of the discussion too, but at the same time that seems like the easiest one for me and the biggest one for me. You literally I don't care how good Holcomb and Heron and maybe Lewis are. And I think they are good quarterbacks and I think that they would do fine eventually. But they're going to throw Awful passes. They'll probably get, throw two, three interceptions if they're thrown into the mix if Skyler goes down. These guys have zero game experience. There is some insulation here if you truly are running the ball 50 to 65% of the time. That takes some pressure off a quarterback. So, I mean, quarterback, yeah. Running back, I'd hate to lose somebody, but also I feel like with a two, if you're going to go with two or three running backs, you can replace. <sighs> Wide receiver, I guess, would be my second option just because you're already thin. I'm already uncomfortable with where they're at um, in terms of depth, and I don't think you can afford to lose another name there. So, Well, I guess you got to mention linebacker, too, even though because Hughes is off the table already. Yeah. You lose another guy, you're. You lose Elijah Sullivan again, who is hurt. Yeah. I mean, well, has been hurt. Right. We can assume he'll probably get hurt again this year. And you're the middle linebacker, Frank. <laughs> Frank, Thank God Riley isn't. Frank Gates, middle linebacker. <laughs> it sounds like a sounds sounds like an NCAA football generated name. <laughs> and he's like six foot four, you know, way way over what he should be. Square shoulder pads. <laughs> Neck roll. <laughs> An amber visor. <laughs> Last question of the first half from Wildcat Pilot 88. How does the performance of special teams change with Chris Kleiman's staff? Will the streak of non-offensive touchdowns continue? This is the one, the, the topic that's not getting discussed uh, enough, and it's kind of our fault, I guess. But they don't have a coach. <laughs> Look, I, I pointed this out before. Bill Snyder had a special teams coach his first season and then went to group coaching the special teams until his son needed a job title so he could be a coach, and he became special teams coordinator. There hadn't been a special teams coordinator, if I remember correctly, since 1989 in Bill Snyder's program. He had always done it the exact same way Chris Kleiman is doing it, dividing up the tasks that on special teams between a variety of different guys. Now, the advantage Coach Snyder had was the dirty little secret that was, you know, a violation, to be honest, that Sean Snyder would make his way onto the practice field to coach the kickers and punters, which is his only area of expertise in football. So, he, you know, they were always good at that. I'm worried about place kicking. It's not a position you can self-coach. You have to have guidance, and I don't know if there's anyone truly that is able to do that or if Sean is still in a position to offer that because we'll get to that later. I uh, <clears throat> It's weird having me know the question. Yeah, I don't like this. I know. I think the return game will be fine. Now, I'm saying that in comparison to what it was last year because it was trash last year with the exception of the one big play in a game they should have lost against a team that North Dakota State destroyed, South Dakota. And without Isaiah Zuber's return, that is a loss for K-State. So that was the one saving grace in terms of the streak of uh, not just non-offensive touchdowns, but special team touchdowns. That was, that was it. I think they'll continue it. I think they understand the importance of it, and they had pretty good special teams up there. So we we shall see. But it's a big part of why K-State football has been successful. There would be games where the opponent would outdo K-State on offense and defense by a you know, little bit. They'd be better. You knew they were better. They moved the ball better. They stopped the offense better. Oh, yeah, there's a special teams touchdown game K-State they won. 
So it's it's important. They get it. They know. And a lot of young coaches out there still don't get it. How important special teams is. It really is a third aspect of the game. That's it for the first half of the PowerCap podcast. And we want to remind you that we're available now on a variety of different platforms. We're, we're based on the 24-7 Sports Podcast Network on Megaphone.fm. But you can get us on Stitcher on Spotify and, of course, Apple Podcasts, formerly iTunes. You can do all of that uh, and some other places. We're in Google Podcasts, which doesn't really have a place. It's just you, you can find us. Um, so go go find us and subscribe uh, on your given site, whether it's Apple or Stitcher or Spotify, and go ahead and give us a review and, and say nice things. And mention that you really like Frank, that Frank's a good addition to the show. Yeah, do that. We'll be back. The gang will return with more of the Power Camp Podcast. Imagine the softest sheets you've ever felt. Now imagine them getting even softer over time. I'm here to tell you about Bowl and Branch Sheets. In a recent customer survey, 96% replied that Bowl & Branch sheets get softer with every wash. They're made from the rarest organic cotton and designed to get even softer over time. Try their sheets with a 30-night guarantee plus 15% off your first order with code ODYSSEY. So head to B-O-L-L and branch.com today. Exclusions apply. See site for details. Selling a little or a lot? Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage, to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage. Shopify is here to help you grow, whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits. Shopify helps you sell everywhere, from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify has got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 15% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. And sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning 24-7 help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash odyssey podcast all lowercase go to shopify.com slash odyssey podcast now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in shopify.com slash odyssey podcast back to fits of the power camp podcast sponsored by fridge wholesale liquor Powercat podcast for July 9th or 10th, depending on when I want to put it up, continues. We're going to make it almost all the way through the summer. We probably won't have one next week because you guys will be in Dallas. Yeah. I mean, unless people wanted to hear me and Zach. Zach and I. Excuse me. Maybe I'll have you on from Dallas. Ooh. Could do that. I love it when we plan live on the podcast. Yeah. I would say the drive home, but it probably wouldn't sound great. What? it? I mean, if I wore my head, but my earbuds, and talked into a microphone on them, I don't know. Well, probably having you screaming from the back seat. Please, I don't want to die. <laughs> and someone else drives because I'm a very reliable driver. Jack's a good driver, though. I am clearly the number two best driver. Are you driving to company. Dallas? Yeah. Oh, we're D the, drove last year. We're so getting I the am. Durango. Yeah. We oh, just, we are. We just talked about having the Durango. Oh. Oh. Uh, yeah. See, here's the thing about D. He's always writing, whether it's physically or in his head. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going down the highway at 80 miles an hour, hashing out a lead for a new story. <laughs> and then the next thing you know, he's going 95. <laughs> well, in heavy traffic. <laughs> so one time, this is many years ago, <clears throat> he was driving, um, I don't even remember what. 
it was probably one of the minivans since we had minivans for a while for the company because those really were good for road trips. Dorky, but good. Uh, when he took the exit at 80 miles an hour to go to the rest area, and we're like entering the rest area, I'm like, D. <laughs> what, what what trip was that last year that he was doing? He was hammering it down. I can't. I think that was Baylor because it was the first road trip with the Durango. Yeah. And I was tired, and I was like, can you drive? He's like, yeah, I got this. And we're in South Oklahoma, North Texas. I'm going to look at the speedometer. I'm just like, uh. I've never heard someone complain about the speed of someone's driving until this trip. And then when you realize D's going about 93 on the interstate. But it's not even that. It's like everybody else and all of the other traffic that was there. And was like, he was like, oh, yeah, man. I didn't even realize I was going that <laughs> it, it could have been bad. <laughs> but he had written three stories in his head. Hey, we are the Power him. Cat Podcast. We're sponsored by Fridge Wholesale Liquor right here in the middle of Manhattan. It's worth a trip to town. If you're passing by Manhattan on your way to, you know, like Randolph or Keats, one of those big cities around us, stop in and go to the fridge. Yes, Keats. I take that. I go through Keats when I come to town now from Beloit. Really? It's my back door. Oh, because yeah, you're my coming in here. on that side, and I come in on 24, so. Mm, works. Smart. Learn something new every day, don't you? If you think uh, the Fort Riley shilling's bad in Manhattan, move to Keats, which is yeah. literally next door to the mm. where they do it. Pass. Hard pass. This segment's brought to you by the High Low. I don't know if you watch soccer at the High Low. Wouldn't be my choice for watching soccer because I would just be eating pizza and wings and burgers. Yeah. Yeah, they do have pizza there, I guess. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> well, I had to think about I, I was going to correct him. I was like, oh, he said Hilo. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> what were you? I thought he said Tanner's. It was in my head. It's a rough week. I'm getting back to normal. Man. Do they have pizza at Tanner's? No. I said the Hilo. I know. He was, Riley was thinking the of. Ad. They have pizza at the Hilo. <sighs> How was that, uh, that pineapple whip? What? Pineapple whip. Oh, Dole Whip. Dole Whip, I, yeah. Yeah. That was good. I wasn't expecting it to be that pineapple Like, I was, like, expecting a hint of it. It It's pineapple ice cream. <laughs> yep. So I like it. Maybe my favorite fruit. I apologize to the High Low for ruining the ad. They do have pizza there, and it is good. It is very delicious pizza. Get in the High Low. Play a little Milwaukee roulette with your face. <laughs> Parker did that. We went there a couple Parker, weeks ago. Parker's his brother. And he's like, what is that? And I was like, you just pay three bucks, and they push a button, and you get whatever beer comes out. And he's like, "What's like? where's the button? And I'm like, over there. So I pointed at the Pepsi machine, right? And he's like, so it's the beers on top of it? And I'm like, no, those are the beers they serve. He's like, okay, so I'm not getting one of those. I'm like, it could be in the machine. It also could not be. You don't know what you're getting. He's like, well, what's in there? I'm like, I don't know how else to explain this to you. It's roulette. You don't know what's going to come out. They're all mixed in there, Parker. He got a, what did he get? Something crappy. But that's part of the game. Welcome to the game. Sometimes you lose at roulette. It's fun. If you only won at roulette, Vegas would suck because there would be no nice buildings. But <laughs> you'd, you'd like it. You'd basically be... It'd be like Junction City because you couldn't afford to build anything, but you'd have a lot of money. We might have listeners in Junction City, Fitz. I'm so sorry, Junction City. I'm just so it's sorry. It's fine. I, I insult Topeka from time to time. Also, I feel like, back to Milwaukee Roulette, I feel like Hilo should be legally obligated to publish the odds of what <laughs> beer you're getting. <laughs> They're like, we don't know. We just... Take a pack and throw it I'm in there. I'm 10 out of 10 on hams. Like, come on. Are you really? <laughs> no, but. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically whatever's on sale that week, they stick it in the uh, the roulette machine there, the Pepsi machine. So get it. Anyhow, get to Hilo. They have pizza. It's great. It's, it's great. <laughs> it's actually really, really good. And, and if you don't, you've never had the pizza before and you just want to go in and have some pizza, have one slice. I'm telling you. Even if you're hungry. Don't go for the second slice unless you're an advanced eater. Or just feel like making yourself miserable that day. Or you need some food to take home to feed the family for a week. How many slices of Hilo pizza could Joey Chestnut eat? 
Ooh. And not, and how, not how, like... How much time? What's our time constraint? Ten minutes. We'll go to ten minutes. Ten minutes? It gets to the hot dogs. Um, and it's got to be... What size is the pizza? I'm trying to think about the pizza. 16 inch? 18 inch? Well, no, no, like the slice. Like an individual slice. What I'm saying is like how big is... If you make that into a pie, oh, how I big is the I pie? It's complex. I don't know the answer to that. I think he is able uh, to do what he does because of a specific set of skills that applies only to that food. Moving on. We got questions from Wabash Station. I don't think just because you need 100 hot dogs in 32 72. seconds that it applies to any food. Because he's he got it down to so many records. He's, he's cracked he's eaten, many records. He's the greatest eater on the planet. And he's not fat. Yeah. It's because he pretty much starves himself you, outside of that. Yeah, he starves himself and then probably... You don't have an advantage when you're fat because then it restricts... The fat restricts exactly. the stomach. When you're thin, like Kobayashi or Joey Chestnut, you know, you can expand the stomach. There's room to grow. You got to be thin. I need to lose some weight then. Yeah. Eat more. There you go. You got to chew a lot of gum. Train that jaw. So go to the high low. Thank you. <laughs> Two questions from Wild Bass Station. It's Power Cat Podcast. Here's Zach. From What a Cat. What are your thoughts on what Coach Bruce Weber did with Team USA? That was, that was good. I mean, Amazing. I'll put it this way the USA doesn't ever lose. So, I mean, it's not they like have. I was, have they? But they have, but. They were clearly the most skilled right. team of this group, and Bruce took care of business. I mean, I anticipated him winning the gold because of, A, I don't think the competition's always elite, and, B, they piece together amazing teams. But Bruce coached damn well out there. Um, you know, I think they only had, like, one game where they were close, and, and by close I mean, like, 12 points. The other ones were, like, 20, almost 30 points at times. So really impressive. Um, hopefully we get to talk to him soon. I know that K-State's been trying to set something up with Bruce and uh, the new freshman and struggling to get a date put together for us, but hopefully we get to talk to him, um, see what it was like for him. But uh, they were good. They were real good. And uh, I wonder, you know, got to wonder kind of what that did for his coaching, you know, coaching a different type of player, coaching a five-star, coaching multiple five-stars at once. So even professionally, you struggle to get dates. This one's out of my hands. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I was just checking. Uh, you, you, we'll get into more. Really, the headline of this thing, I mean, Bruce took care of business. There's no doubt about it. But the, the headline was the fact that they beat Molly for the championship. It's the first African team to make it that far. And then that's significant. People, I think there's a question about recruiting. He, I'm not, I think it's possible he saw players on other teams, other countries that might, have gained his interest for for the future. I mean, honestly, a lot of those players on that team that he coached are taken or aren't coming to Kansas State. But there might be an African kid or a Lithuanian kid or someone else that, that he says, man, didn't have much around him, but this dude can play. It's a good point. I didn't think about that. From Adam K 63 what can Bruce Weber do to capitalize on the success of coaching the 19 and under USA team to a champ? <laughs> championship to a championship <laughs> to a chimp. <laughs> I think I think Fitz just said it best. I mean, he's got to he's got to leverage it the best he can in any way he can. Flash that gold medal. Everywhere just wear it. Just wear it outside of you know the shirt tie and the gold medal over it. <laughs> if I know Bruce, he'll never put that gold medal on again. <laughs> I mean, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and and Bruce isn't a guy to brag. He's a very humble person, so it's you know that it's not like he's going to walk in and say, "I want a gold medal, bitches." <laughs> I don't think he'd say it like that, regardless. But I want a gold medal, bitches. Um, I mean, I think it'll help a little bit. I just wouldn't put too much stock into winning it and using it as a recruit. I, it might help a little bit. But, I mean, I don't think it's going to change the type of player they're going after entirely for every class in the future. I don't think it's going to change who he is as a coach entirely or a recruiter, really. Um, Maybe there's one kid on that team that said, I really liked playing for Coach Weber. Right. Maybe that maybe that happened. We don't know. But let's be honest here. Most of America doesn't know or give a crap about the under-19 team winning the gold medal. They just don't. And that probably goes for a lot of people, a lot of recruits out there. They just, they, if they know it, they don't know Bruce coached it. We know it because it's it was in our realm of discussion 
And it was important that we kind of follow along, fan, be it fans or media or whatever. So we're aware of it. But as a kid that plays basketball in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, aware that USA won the under-19 title? Maybe. Is he aware Bruce Weber was a coach? Probably less chance of that. So, Let's uh, put, put it this way. Chris Lowry was on, an, on one of these staffs a couple of years ago, and they won gold. And the, who the head coach of that team was? Jamie Dixon. Jamie Dixon's recruited fine, but it's not like he's leveraged this into five-star classes right. every single year. So, yeah, it'll definitely help a little bit, I think, and he should use it as leverage. I mean, it's it's a pretty nice tool and a hell of an accomplishment. Tip of the cap, but it's just not – I don't. I just don't think it's going to change as much as some people might think it's going to change. From Hurt as Joe, can K-State basketball use this gold medal performance to generate excitement? Um, yeah. I mean, mm. a little bit. Not tons, though. I mean, what does it mean for you as a K-State fan? You know? I, I would say if you're fired up about them winning the under-19 title, you're probably already under the the flag of Bruce Weber. Right. If you're a doubter, you're going to say, what's that matter? It's just a matter of perspective. He didn't win it with K-State. He won it with Team USA. Right. Um, I mean, they'll they'll pump it up a little bit. I'm sure they'll do some sort of, at the football game, he'll stand at the north end zone and flash his gold medal and everybody will get excited. But I don't think it's going to be a major marketing like, oh, come watch gold medal winning coach Bruce Weber in the K-State Wildcats play Emporia State. (laughs) (laughs) I mean. We got to (laughs) go. Well, hell, I wasn't going to go go before now, but uh, it's cool. And it's a really cool accomplishment. I think what it emphasizes to me is that if he got even a higher level of player than he is, the program would be a serious program. I I think I feel like Bruce is a better coach than many of his peers because I feel like even with the big three they had last year, they were outmanned in games. They just didn't have the depth or the physicality. He kind of finessed and coached them to a higher – that was not a Big 12 championship caliber team from top to bottom compared to other teams in the conference. At least that's my opinion. And I feel like if he would start getting a higher level recruit – I'm not talking about your you know, your one, two, and three like Wade, Brown, Stokes. I'm talking about your six, seven, and eight where you had more firepower coming in. Yeah, and you get a really solid starting five and a couple guys off the bench that can play and a couple guys in development that had a true upside and not just guys that maybe he'll get good, but probably he'll transfer. I, I think we know now that this dude can really coach. That's that's the biggest takeaway. If he gets the right level of players, he could do a lot of damage. And we're not talking about if they have a down performance in the first round, they still win. That, that kind of quality of team. From Ricky Tiki Tavi, you would think that an Elite Eight run followed by a Big 12 championship would attract some higher level talent. So, why can't Bruce Weber capitalize off the last two seasons recruiting wise? I'd argue he has in 2020, absolutely. Getting, getting Nigel Pack was huge. Um, I want to, yeah, this 2020 is big. It's big. Now there's some real awareness. Elite Eight followed by Big 12 championship. Okay, now let's 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 see. Let's watch it roll and see if something special happens. I didn't anticipate him building off the Elite Eight that much. It was, it was so late. It was and it was it was one damn impressive win, right? And a really good win against Creighton. Let's be real. In March, after a majority of the prospects have signed, exactly. So I didn't expect tons out of the 2019 class, and actually they got Dejuan Gordon. So I mean, tough to say they didn't. No, they didn't piece together a four-member class of four Dejuan Gordons. They didn't do that. And I have clearly, and if you read my series or are reading my series, I clearly have some concerns about this class. But I'd argue that 2020 is off to the right foot. It sounds like they're in good position for some of their top targets for this class. Um, And maybe we're finally going to see the class where we hear in, you know, June, July, August, September, hey, these are the top guys. And come October, November, those are the guys that are signing, not the third, fourth, and fifth option on the list. Maybe that's what happens in this class. So 
I'm not ready to say they haven't capitalized at all, and, and I don't. I'd argue that they're in the right direction. This is going to be. By the way, this is a big weekend. Um, pay attention to what happens because I think it's Peach Jam this weekend. Um, Brad Beal didn't make it, which is interesting because that's where a lot of their targets originate from. Um, but try to keep an eye on what Nigel Pack does because if he keeps scoring at a high level, he's going to continue to pull offers even though he's committed. It's not <laughs> the name's not on the line yet, so it's far from done. And they've got tons of tons of prospects um, playing this week. And I've got a story in the morning coming out with outlining everybody that's going to be here. So it's a big week, and hopefully they can continue to build that momentum um, off of Pax commitment. From AZ Caddo Five, is are there any recent clues to what Bruce might do with the final scholarship? Uh, not real big ones. I mean. It's kind of gone quiet, to be honest with you, um, in terms of, of movement. I I don't think they're going to land anybody here in the next month or two for 19. I I don't know what they're going to do. It, with. It's, it's an interesting situation. We just talked about their ability maybe to capitalize in 2020. It looks like all the the senior transfers, the one-and-done guys are, that of value are gone. Maybe you still take someone just to fill it. I don't know. Maybe you can find someone. I'm not. I'm not sure there's anyone out there even worth taking. Yeah, at this point, I don't think there is. So, then it comes down to: uh, Do you actually get lucky and identify someone so late in the process that would be a freshman that actually can help you? That's doubtful. That, that, I mean, especially if it's at Pete Jam, everyone will see him. So, <clears throat> that leaves you with signing a, a transfer. That has to sit out, can practice, and help you in practice, and be eligible in 2020. But wouldn't you maybe, based on what we just talked about, want to just hold on to that scholarship and fill it with a 2020 recruit that maybe you'll find another Nigel Pack or someone like that, another possible four-star guy, maybe winning the under-19 will pay off, maybe the Elite Eight followed by a Big 12 championship will pay off. I'm usually not a fan of sitting on a scholarship, but in this case, I think I would. I think I would just hold tight with that scholarship and slip it in my back pocket for 2020, but let the coaches know we can't screw this up. We can't sit here and be, like, swinging for the fence on a kid we have no chance at. Let's identify guys that we can really get in with and dig in our heels and get after them. And and we – and you can't come down then in, in 2020 in that class and only end up with 12 guys and have a, a scholarship just still sit on the table. Then why the hell didn't you bring in a transfer? You've got to go sign guys early, fill that class, and then if someone leaves, then you have another scholarship to go try to find someone. That's been my argument the whole time, and I I wrote the story, so you guys can go back and read it if you want to. I, I've said for a long time that they should just sit on it. I think there's enough talent in the 20 class to go out and find somebody else to use it there and to, to just move forward with that. Because, you know, your only other option, your only options are this, sit on it, take someone super late and hope you get a steal, which you probably won't, or give it to someone like Pearson McAtee, who isn't a senior. So he's going to have it for two years. And that just kind of puts you in a tough position as a coach. So I'd like to see him hold it, um, sit on it and go to the next class with, with multiple scholarships. From CCL27, what are some things aside from winning you would want to see the athletic department as a whole achieve? Just at K-State in general? In yeah. general. Don't be embarrassing. Don't Puka Williams something. I thought you were telling me not to be embarrassing. <laughs> I was like, damn. That, what an achievement. That goes, that goes for you, too. Um, yeah, just do the right thing. Be good stewards of the K-State reputation. Uh, build some facilities. Don't half-ass it like it's been done in the past. Don't put the damn practice facility where you are. We're going to get into facilities here, but don't don't stick it right. No. No. Come up with a better plan than that for those facilities. Maybe it'll cost more money. Build a nice volleyball facility, one that will be cool. It'll be a cool venue and not be a steel garage-looking thing like a lot of schools would do. Do something nice. You know, just continue to do things in a first-class manner. 
Uh, let's be blunt. You offer the minimum number of sports. Uh, I would sit here and say you probably should think about men's soccer and softball, but that's not going to happen. So you have no excuses not to fund these sports in the best way possible, to give them what they need. Go do that. And, you know, don't don't embarrass us. I don't have a lot to add. That was kind of right on the head. I mean, keep pushing, I guess, is the simplest way to, to put that. Yeah. You know, John Curry came in and he pushed the envelope. Did a great job of that. And Gene Taylor has done a little bit of that now, adding in, you know, the – I'm sure the soccer and the baseball renovations were kind of already in the works, but he's done a really good job of keeping the momentum moving on that. I mean, just don't get complacent. That way, in 10 years, we're looking at this and saying, oh, wow, veneer's kind of out of date, you know? Oh, the basketball center is kind of out of date. Just keep wanting what is best and keep improving it. From Powercat Ryan, there seems to be an argument about this recruiting class that it isn't much different than what a typical Snyder 2.0 class is. Uh, is the class as it stands now better or worse than what we are accustomed to? If you're just taking the aerial view of looking at stars, no. But the stars aren't stars. There's a there's an underlying rating that goes with the you know three star, and the rating is higher. Dramatically, no. But it's higher. I think the I think the difference is they have you know what eighteen guys whatever it is yeah right now they wouldn't have eighteen in December under Bill Snyder and they'd always be scrambling and that last twenty five percent of the class would be a pure shot in the dark. So for me, I think the biggest difference is if they continue this, they're going to feel good about everyone in the class and they're not going to be like, well, we got to fill this class and so we'll give you a chance. And then that kid's gone. Go back and look at some of those Snyder classes and read those names. You'll go, who the hell is this? <laughs> over and over, you'll say that. You forget it now because you remember the stars of the class and everyone has players that don't make it. But if you go back and look over and over there's like who what I, most of this class never did anything that's the biggest difference i feel like they're getting guys that are going to come in and have an impact on the program they all won't be stars that's not what i'm saying i'm i just think they'll be they for the most part they'll have more guys that will contribute something and not just disappear off the face of the earth and literally a lot of those recruits did. It's not like they transferred to Memphis or Colorado State or San Jose and became stars. They just disappeared off the face. They just went away because they weren't college football players that they filled the class with. So that's the biggest difference for me. Now they still got to hold it together, but we'll see if that happens. From Purple Pancho Villa, what will the attendance be for the first two home games? Sellouts or will there be some holes? Listed attendance or attendance? Oh, hey, this is my biggest thing. Gene's more honest. I agree he's more honest. Gene, this is what I, I'm under the understanding this is what they did with basketball, so maybe they applied it to football. They took season ticket, alumni season tickets, knowing that you couldn't come to every game because you don't live here typically plus actual student attendance. And that was your that was your number. It seemed to get you the good in between. Yeah. Balance. I think it, I mean I think I the first game will be 50. I don't. You don't? I don't. I don't I think the life's out of the program and it's got to be rekindled. Yeah, but there's the biggest, been a lot of excitement. The biggest problem with the program has been in that student section. Yeah. But, but I mean, we noticed it this year. The students weren't there early; they weren't there late. And I, I looking at the product, I get it. I. So if students show up in mass, and I think that's the biggest thing he can do now that he's off the catbacker tour, and and I'm not just talking about Coach Kleiman, the assistant coaches, captains, get in front of student groups over and over and over. Come out, be there for us, beginning to end. We need you. Because if you look back at the heyday of K-State football, it's easy to stay through a game for a winner. I get it. But the student section at K-State, where it's seated, and the amount of seats that they get is unprecedented in college football. They don't realize it. They don't respect it. But opponents know it. Having that student section along an entire side behind their bench makes a difference. 
now they got to, they've they've got to make the difference. I think you and I are. I am just probably just going to disagree with you here. I I really do think there's. I think that there's enough energy from the hire, from win the dang day, from this and that. Hope you're right. That it's just I. It's tough to be a fan <clears throat> to have a ticket and say. Oh, I'm not that interested in going until they prove it when you have a new coach and stuff like that. And I think that everybody loves, you know, obviously everybody loves football. Everybody loves that first game back. Well, but you, you, you're you under the assumption of that that they've sold 50,000 tickets. They, they probably have fair five to 10,000 open seats that are unsold that they need to sell for single-game tickets. I'll put it this way. I think the list of attendance is going to be 50-something for that first game. I think we'll see some pockets here and there probably empty but i think it'll be for the majority pretty well filled i think those I upper think, sections that are committed to non to conference opponents will be empty i think that second game might be a little bit rougher it's 11 a.m not a not again not a very good opponent you're yeah what do i really want to see this you know it's probably going to be tougher to get people to that one than it is for the first one I think that school starting a week later might help a little bit. Is it? Yeah. You only got one week of school, and then you got a football game. Ooh. That's interesting, because usually that first game falls on Labor Day weekend. I mean, it does, oh, but it does? schools... I'm I didn't pretty know, sure, I didn't know pretty what Labor sure. Day is. I know that... when Labor Day is. I it's the it first. Up. It is. Or the second. Yeah. It is the second, so it is Labor Day weekend. That hurts. because. But, to your point... Yeah, Kids if, usually want to go home after two weeks right, of Right, you go home after two weeks of college, and you're like, well, I've done two weeks of college. I need a break. Uh, I need a break. <laughs> now it's like, well, I've been here one week. That is a game Let's changer. go to the game. That's a big game changer, because you don't miss the first weekend. And then that whole week, everybody's like, oh, the game's this weekend. The game's this weekend. That's that's big. All right. Good job, Zach. Yeah. That's different. Hey, Zach contributed. <laughs> Whenever Zach contributes to something like this, it's usually... Thoughtful. It's got a pretty good back of on it. He opinion. thinks of things like this. <laughs> he knows the schedule. I'm just impressed that Zach's been graduated longer than I have, and he still knows that the school year starts when it starts. And I, if you'd told me that the school year started in September this year, I probably would have believed you. Huh. <laughs> Sorry. Frank uh, wouldn't. From... <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Sounds like D. I know. <laughs> my D Scott impression is my Frank Martin impression. From Heard as Joe. Hey, are Riley. The... <laughs> Shut the F up. <laughs> Fitz is bag, man. What are you doing? All right, that's not D. <laughs> uh, from Heard as Joe, are all the expansion options for the stadium on hiatus? No. No. Well, you got to understand this. What the... I mean, they're not going to do 60,000 seats. I, I would think as fans, you would have come to realize the market can't support that. I mean, it's a, a 50,000, 52,000 is what it really is. is an appropriate amount of seats for Kansas State football. If you sell it out, there's a little demand. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. You get people that really want to be there to be there. The next phase, though, ties into the Bramlage thing where they're going to redo so much of Bramlage. Personally, I would buy a bunch of dynamite and start there, but they're going to they're going to renovate it, update it, tunnel into that one side so there'll be a lower entrance on the alumni side. They're going to do some cool stuff. They're going to do some expensive stuff and that includes blowing out the legends room there on the north end and extending that out to a a deck, a, you know, I don't know if it would be a party deck. It won't be seating. I don't know how they're going to handle it. I think the room will come out quite a ways where people can use that as like a suite area or entertainment area. So that will all be tied in, and there will be there will be a concourse, a second-level concourse over that south end zone walkway. I think if they stick with the plan that was originally out there, then the offices that are on the lower level of Bramlage will become restrooms and maybe concessions and you know, maybe a nap room for the media. I think the nap room for the media keeps getting pushed off the agenda. And I, I well, wonder why. I, I don't. I hired a new it. coach. There's no time for nap now. That's true. Huh. That's true. Usually the third quarter you kind of want to nap. <coughs> uh, so I don't know. I, they, no, it's not. It's not. Uh, but the number one things for football are that indoor practice facility and new practice, outdoor practice field, because that ties into other projects, like what they want to do with the existing 
indoor facility and the existing grass fields. All for track, I think. So, yeah, it's not off the table. First thing up, I think, will probably be a volleyball arena. That'd be my guess, just a guess. Police put air conditioning in it. I think they'll probably have air conditioning. You know, you can't ever be too safe. I would I would encourage them, though, to study the acoustic qualities of a Hearn Fieldhouse and try to replicate that as best they can. So don't build a, little, a nice little arena where you can have a concert in it. I don't think that'll ever be replicated. I don't think it's possible to make it that lousy. <laughs> and yet nice at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. From Cat in a Trap. This is the last question of the second half. Uh, in the July 4th podcast, you stated, and I'm assuming Fitz stated. It was Marcus. Was not was it me. Marcus? <laughs> well, I think it was, but go ahead. Okay. That's why um, I added it. Uh, whoever it was stated that K-State is not going to be a 9 or 10 win school, and Cat in a Trap expects 9 and 10 win seasons every three years or so. Uh, since you stated that's not a realistic expectation, are you saying that eight wins is the ceiling with five wins to seven wins normal for K-State? Now, I don't actually remember what was said, but I don't think at any time anyone said they can't win nine or ten games. I think the, the comment was it's not going to be a nine, ten program consistently every year. I think the expect, I think his expectations line up with mine. Yeah, you know, here starting off, Chris Kleiman, you're going to have – Maybe a struggle, you know, for a couple seasons. But I think being in that seven to ten win, you know, if you're scheduling right, that means you're winning four, you know, of eight, seven, eight Big Twelve games. You can this program can do that. There's no reason football again can't be K State's thing. I, I don't accept that just because Oklahoma and Texas get a higher level of recruit, you can't compete with them. You go find guys like a Jordy Nelson, like a Mark Semino, like a Ben Lieber that might be off the beaten path, and you can go find them in South Dakota or Central Kansas, and, and they can play it at that level. And I think that's what this coaching staff brings. They understand that. So I'm not – nobody said they can't win nine or ten games ever. This it's going to be really difficult in the current environment. You know, Coach Snyder found a magic formula for a while using some junior college guys and supplementing with some great Kansas kids who developed to win double-digit games for an unprecedented string of time. Not for K-State, for college football. What he did is hard to do if you are Oklahoma, Nebraska, Florida State, Notre Dame winning 11 games over and over just doesn't happen. So that's really what was stated. That maybe that magic time will never be quite replicated. But still, nobody's saying that K State can't have that year where they win enough games and are in that conversation for not only Big 12 title, but the playoffs. God, that'd be fun. Wouldn't that be fun? I do think it would be fun. You're, you're in favor of the fun. You wouldn't I, be upset that it'd be fun. As someone that likes to, Have not fun. likes to, as someone that attends every game that is played, it would be more fun for K-State to be in the better bowl games. I can confirm it would be better to win more games than it would be to lose more games. Bowl. This is riveting. I know what bowl we're talking about right now. Let's just say I don't want K-State to go 7-5. and five. <laughs> I'd rather they go 6-6. Six and six. Or eight and four and better. <laughs> Just six and six. Let us go to Fort Worth, play in that game. And be old by Christmas. Beat Army. <laughs> beat Army. <laughs> beat, we already know the opponent. <laughs> and, and come home. Yeah. So send us to Phoenix to be We'll like be home child. for Christmas. It'd be nice to be home for Christmas and do a bowl. Because K State went six and six. And that's the music taking you out of the second half of the podcast. We have an overtime. Actually, more serious questions than fun questions. You guys, lame, be fun, too much. But we'll try because we're experts at this. And we're sponsored by the fridge. And we're sitting in the WTC Gig Pirate Studios. And we're powering through the entire summer with podcasts. I didn't think it could happen. The gang will return with more of the Power Camp Podcast.
Diets and workouts, you've done the work, so why can't you get to your goal weight? That's because up to 70% of your weight is predetermined by your genetics. So while you've been told that it's all about your willpower, you're actually fighting your biology. Don't do it alone. Found's doctor design program uses medication as part of a treatment plan that targets your body's unique biological needs so that your body works with you and not against you. Take the quiz at joinfound.com to see if Found's weight loss program is right for you. Your fever is high and the pressure to log in at work is too. But when you finally decide to take care of you, there's Instacart. Just because that one perfect coworker of yours is attending all meetings, camera on while she's sneezing, coughing, and aching, doesn't mean you have to do the same. Take it from us. Trying to stay on top of things will only get you further behind. Instead, get everything from tissues and teas to cough suppressants and comforting soups delivered through Instacart in as fast as 30 minutes. If anyone needs anything, they can just redirect their questions to that one perfect coworker worker of yours. Back to Fits of the Power Camp Podcast, sponsored by Fridge Wholesale Liquor. The first half is done, the second half was long, and it is also done in the third half. Grab it dead again. The overtime is here. It's the overtime. It's been the overtime for a long time, and I still call it the third half. Yeah, I... Vodka. <laughs> I just got to some vodka around. People understood what it was. It was inappropriate. I just liked the theme music. It was good theme music. Did you ever make that your ringtone? No. As if it was an absurd question. I'm a for me classy to ask. guy. Why would I have vodka as my ringtone? He says, "No, I never no. would do. That. I would put it on my podcast, but I would never put it on my phone." No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I wouldn't. I would buy vodka at the fridge. I've done it before. Get into the fridge. Sponsor of our PowerCat podcast. More podcast servings are coming this fall. We've got some great ideas. Working on some, hashing things out. I think it's going to be fun. It just won't be more of us three monkeys chirping away. Monkeys. I got my vacation monkeys in. Monkeys chirp. Mm, no. You could argue. Okay. A chimp chirps. Is it a chirp? Well, I mean, I guess what what would you, I don't know what I'd call the sound. I don't know. I got my vacation in, so now I'm ready to to crank. To get going, you're doing remarkably well, recovering Thank from recover, returning from Hawaii. Oh, well, actually, I did well for a day or two, and then I went into. It's weird. I think because we left at 8 p.m. Hawaii time, we flew Hawaii. So that was, yeah. There, by the way, what if there was like Hawaii, and I'm like, no, it's Hawaii. Because Hawaii, the, the W is stupid. Like a v in there, like. Um. So, you know, we're leaving at 1 a.m. Kansas time. We got into Denver at 7 a.m. Denver time. So, like, you're thinking, okay, well, you've been going to bed at 9. Because you were right. You go to bed incredibly early in Hawaii when you're there. It just happens. You get tired. Well, you're, it The days are so fun. Why would you? And it's so dark. Yeah, it's very dark, very early. So I'm thinking, like, okay, 8 p.m., I'll watch a movie or something. Then I'll sleep on the plane until we get to Denver. Didn't happen. I don't know why. I'm usually good at sleeping on planes. I couldn't sleep. I slept one hour on that seven-hour flight, and I was awake for the rest of it. Then I took an hour-long nap in Denver, so I'm pretty dead at this point. But I went to bed very early last night. I didn't exactly wake up early today. I got like 10 and a half, 11 hours of sleep. You might have pulled it off. So I might be doing good. The more caffeine I keep pounding will be good. I just can't let it hit me. I have to completely beat it by the end of the week because I'm in a wedding this weekend. I have to be attentive. I have to be doing things. Just say yes. I can't. I'm be tired. Grouchy. I can't be grouchy at 1:30 in the afternoon. Did on you Saturday. write the speech? I did do it on the plane to Hawaii. Hickory dickory duck. <laughs> oh no, Riley! No. It was funny. I watched Wedding Crashers on the flight. <laughs> <laughs> That's good preparation right when, there. When they cut into the the best man speech of that one, he's like, so after I finished my ninth stint at rehab, <laughs> I was like, I could open it like that. <laughs> Nobody would get the reference, though. Nobody watches movies and TV shows. Riley's been in rehab? I could do the Office one. or you, We don't watch the Office, but he's, he opens up his speech. Dictionary.com defines wedding. As the fusing of two metals with a hot torch. <laughs> so, 
I've got a couple in mind. Some similarities there. Yes, indeed. <laughs> It's the overtime. Do you want to read any sponsors or anything? Uh, I said the fridge. You Promote should, ourselves. You should leave us a review because, like we mentioned that fancy graphic earlier, if you leave us a review, Ooh. I can put your username ah. into a fancy graphic. We're bribing people. And make you a graphic. Now, I'm not going to do it for everybody because it's a lot. If but. you say the right things, like uh, the podcast is great and fits is sexy, we'll do. You give us a five star rating, you give us a good review, maybe you end up on a graphic. Woo! Woo! Pop the Molly on the swim. <laughs> Woo! Pop, pop the Molly, is that who uh, Bruce beat for the gold medal? <laughs> Yeah, when you said Molly, I'm like, I did too. they beat Molly? And I'm I like, oh, <laughs> from Africa. That one. Molly. I got to be honest. I wouldn't think that Mali. would be the the African nation that would, like, I don't know of a bunch of recruits that came out of that. You hear I'll put it this Sudan. way. I didn't know that it was a thing. I didn't know it was a place. Really? Really. Okay. No, I didn't do great in social studies. <laughs> we had to draw maps of all of the countries in yeah. seventh grade. We did continents. <laughs> <laughs> there was a couple of them. Okay. What, which ones did you draw? The North Pole? <laughs> Here's a circle. Here's a America. Everything else doesn't matter. <laughs> Here is Kansas, and that does not, the rest does not matter. What do you, you think of my Fourth of July shirt? I loved it. 1776% sure that I'm drinking. I like it a lot. Parker had one too. He didn't post anywhere. It said, uh, it's a picture of Benjamin Franklin, the $100 bill one, and it said, too cool for British rule. <laughs> there was one with that picture. It said, Ben Dranken. <clears throat> Basically, we, we've started this thing where, like. Did you find them in Hawaii? No, no, no. Uh, we bought them online. For Christmas, we bought. Did you go to Walmart and funny, search the No, there's graphic. websites. He's <laughs> section. It was, uh, we started with Christmas. We bought. Christmas sweaters that were just ridiculous. We wore them to the family Christmas. And then we wore these on the family vacation. So I think basically every time this family gets together, Parker and I just buy weird things and wear them and try to ruin pictures. This will be awesome, including 20 years from now when you're both married with kids. Yep. Dad. I would buy them for my children as well. <laughs> 17, 76% chance little Johnny, yeah, little Johnny drinking. Gates is drinking. Well, let's be real. It probably is. Probably should name his kid Frank. <laughs> to your questions from Ma Bass Station, sponsored by The Fridge. Here we go. From Cliff Clavin, 754, Puka Williams suspended only one game by Les Miles. Is that because he's the only decent football player on the team? We've learned this offseason that there are two different sets of rules. If you're really good and irreplaceable, you can beat be a bad citizen. We'll just say that. Be a bad citizen. Be a bad human being. But we've probably always known that. But I think they've narrowed it now to be just if you're really good. If you're somewhat seem replaceable, you, you'll be replaced. There's no doubt in my mind. If he was the backup running back, he'd be gone. No doubt in my mind. If he was an unknown cornerback, he'd be gone. If he was a starting receiver... But not the star receiver, he'd be gone. If he was the punter who's first team all Big 12, he'd still be gone. But he's Puka Williams. He's all they got. They've got, you know, they've, they've got a really good running back that they can market. And if you lose him, you lose a lot of momentum in the program. That When I talked about K-State, that's what I meant. Don't be that program. If a guy does the stuff he did, I sound like it's an accusation. He did it, right? He was convicted of it. Yes, <clears throat> but he, he served a diversion program for it. You don't do that if you didn't do it. <laughs> I mean, you know? Yeah, this, I, don't, I don't know how you get a diversion for violence against someone else. You get diversion for underage drinking. You get diversion for... I don't know. Too many speeding tickets. I don't know. I don't even understand diversion, to be real honest. You did it. Do do Take the penalty. There is. There was a quote, and I don't know where it was from. Um, Stuart Mandel tweeted it yesterday, but it was. I imagine it was in the Kansas City Star story at one point. 
Quote, an affidavit obtained by the Kansas City Star showed that the woman had text messages from Williams admitting to punching her. A police officer found bruises on the woman, according to the affidavit. He abused the woman, and it was his first-time offense. So, I mean, I think a lot of people have made a case, you know, for Tyree Kill, for example, that everybody deserves a second chance. And I am I am in favor of that. I don't know as if that he should have been kicked off the team. I don't know if you get that chance immediately. I mean, Tyree Kill, second chance was the NFL. Right. Mm-hmm. I he ended up leaving Oklahoma State and going to where? You remember? Uh, Southern Alabama. That's all right. Yeah, it is, isn't it? South Alabama. That's oh, the same thing. So. Did I'm he even sure. have a stop between? Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. Dang it, now I'm looking this up, and I was on yeah. West Alabama. West Alabama. That's a whole bunch different than South Alabama. Yeah, because South Alabama is. I don't really know. Division one. Do you want? Anyways, I I I kind of thought they would maybe do the non-con. And then be back for Big 12. That's what I thought they were going to do with Hunter Horizon, too. I thought maybe even more than that. Maybe a six-game suspension. One game is absurd, and that one game is against Indiana State. That's ridiculous. What, what kind of a, or an example of a precedent are you setting? And I'm not even trying to compare it. Like, I, I saw a bunch of people, oh, well, K-State suspend, or K-State removed the player that was in trouble for it on there. Don't even compare it to K-State's. Don't, don't muddy K-State up with this situation. This is about KU, Puka Williams, and Les Miles. And like Fitz said, it's pretty damn clear at this point. It's all about who you are and what you mean to the team. And that will determine your punishment. Makes me sick. Although I tend to remember a basketball player at K State who was accused of being involved in a sh- highway shooting, and we were told he didn't do anything when he did indeed do it. That's what I'm talking about. Don't do that stuff. KU should be ashamed of this situation, but they won't be. They're so they've gone. They've just gone past it. I, I mean. Basketball players aren't held accountable for things they do in elevators or in their dormitory. So they're fine with this. It's fine. I, don't be that program. That's what I want for Casey. Don't be this. Don't do that. Don't recruit kids who are going to put you in a position like this. There's a reason Puka Williams went to Kansas. A kid so good, he can start and be really good at running back in the Big 12, went to Kansas, and you never wondered why? It wasn't because he's got part of a foot. Nobody cared about that. That was just a cool story to tell for marketing. There was other questions about him. But, KU, you just keep doing you. It's fun to watch. From What a Cat... How close are we to video interviews from the new GPC studio? Back to Zach. We're getting there. You're going to, tomorrow we're going to be a big day. Yep, tomorrow's a big day. Hopefully we're going to shoot. Now, we when, should have a test shoot tomorrow. Probably. When we're shooting them is different from when you'll see them. This isn't going to be immediate content necessarily that we shoot and you see it. There's going to be some post-production to yep. it. And, and uh, the plan is to release in bursts of short seasons like – Every I don't know what day of the week we haven't really designated that we got to kind of we still don't know what day press conferences are on. Hey Kenny and Ryan, could you get back to us on what day we're going to have press conferences? We got to plan stuff. Please, please, please. Um, but we'll, like we'll do a short season, maybe four, and then one a week every week of August we'll release them hmm. without okay. releasing too much. We've got something here, but I could. Uh, we got someone good, hopefully, if it all works out, for the for the first one we film, but he may not be the first one we show. Secrets. Yeah, I mean, it's not. We might film them out of order. Basically, to answer the question shortly, no, we're not just talking a bunch and hoping you guys forget that we said anything. I didn't build the studio for the. Yeah, for the for, for the, the tees. <laughs> yeah. We just it's it's different when Zach's not full time in the summer. I mean, you know, can't dedicate well, still don't really have any if you don't have a guest, there's Right. But what I'm saying is I think yeah. if you were full time, maybe we would have moved on a little bit sooner. But yeah. there's a lot of different parts moving around right now. But well, we got in, getting closer. Once and, once we got through the spring, 
There is absolutely no reason to be putting up, uh, I don't want to say expensive, intensive work in June or July. And, you know, these type of things that take a lot of work. They, you can just see page views drop, number of people on the site drops. It's June or July. You got folks, you got stuff to do, particularly in early July. I mean, that's just true everywhere. I mean, our, honestly, our page numbers weren't great. But when you got the 4th of July falling on Thursday, that means people are checking out mentally on Wednesday. And then they got a four-day weekend. And Monday's probably useless, too. I, I learned that. Uh, I learned a valuable lesson on Monday. I had to go to Kansas City for a doctor's appointment. Met my brother and sister-in-law at Joe's in Olathe at 12.30 p.m. Why would you do that? We were second in line. Oh. Apparently people were barbecued out from the 4th. I don't know. Oh, okay. Never mind. I retract. And it was the burnt ends platter, a rarity. The white buffalo of Joe's specials. White buffalo. And it was delicious. And I got three pounds of meat to go. <laughs> of course you did. But we're close. Very close. Purple Powerhouse asks, how much does Sean Snyder deal with the football program now? Not much. His office is on the lower level and, like, on the third level. Football's fourth level. So where we have press conferences? Yes. Okay. I had to think about That's that. actually the second level when you come in. Well, the, the first level is the basement because that's field level. Yeah. It's technically the main level where we come in. <laughs> For near is so confusing. It is because you got two different sides to it. It's the level that you guys see on the north end zone right. where you can walk around in right. case you're not familiar with where we that's have That's the offices. offices. That's athletic offices, and that's the level at which is offices. Then the level above it that have the little decks that overlook the field, those are the coaches' offices. That's the football off- office level. And, uh, you know – I mean, he's a special teams analyst, the senior special teams analyst. Uh, An analyst can't coach. I mean, they can't be on the field. So, yeah. I mean, I think Stanton Weber's handling a lot of the special teams, along with the coaches that have specific duties. Jason Ray? Yeah. return People got duties as, you know, the return guy and the the blocking scheme guy and the the punt coverage guy. You know, Offense, defense, coaches, they divide them up. So that's what Coach Schneider did for a lot of years. From Purple Poncho Villa, if you took one game off a year to consume a K-State game as a fan, do you think you would be able to turn off the media member inside of you and just enjoy the emotion of the game? No. 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 I can't do it when I go to high school no. games no. back home. No. It doesn't matter what the game is. I can barely Yeah, it's cheer. not even about being K-State. I, I, I was able to do it for the Royals when I went in the postseason. And that would have been the first year, not the World Series year. I was able to do it then, but that's so different. I mean, that's professional. That's the Royals. That's childhood stuff that I never had to give up. But it was weird. But I'd say even Royals games now, honestly, like until no. there's a big play, I don't really do much. Well, you got to set down your beer. That's true. Clap. That's not good. It's, it's a different – it literally does change you as an individual because you – when you don't cheer for years and you're not part of the invi- – you you learn to function in the form of like, hey, this play happened. I need to do my job, not gawk about how awesome that play was. Yeah. It's different. So, you, no, I don't think I could. You get yourself trained to constantly analyze and observe. And it's not something you turn off and on. You just kind of – you do, you know, particularly for me. I mean, I'm an old dog now, and it's hard for me to do that. It's hard for me to honestly, and this is somewhat uh, elitist, it's hard for me to watch from the stands because you get so spoiled. You got a desk. You got air conditioning. You got replay TVs. You got Twitter. I mean, ice cream sandwiches. <laughs> it's, it's so, yeah. I mean, it'd be super weird. It, it, would be a very strange. I can't take this one step farther. I attempted to tailgate before uh, a Royals game, and I couldn't. I really couldn't do that. Oh no, I'm good at that. I can do that. <laughs> it was just like, you know, that's that's like I never get to do this. I've never really tailgated as an adult. That's really weird to me that you don't know how to drink beer. <laughs> I've never had a beer at a tailgate. 
the hell is wrong with I you had, guys? I had beer to tailgates, but people are like, you know, playing games and, you know. Like, oh, just I love tailgating. I, that's why I love going to Royals games with my friends. Well, you don't love like, it for the Royals games right now. Right. Not with, like, my family and stuff because we don't really do it then if it's just us. But, like, you can't tailgate? I tailgated after the All-Star game. Interesting. Hmm. After we let traffic clear. Just tailgate at the bar? Yeah, that, that was when you, you hired me. What's that? The, the All-Star game? game? Yeah. Huh. Right, we ran, me and Tyler ran into you at Power and Light. I don't like, remember that. I must have been drunk. Probably. And then we ran into Scott Van Pelt. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Like, oh, you're Zach. Did you take oh. a picture with him? Tyler did. You should have. That's, That's pretty cool. Like, I was like, whatever, it's Scott Van Pelt. It wasn't a better picture than the giant stingray he encountered in yeah. Hawaii. Oh, Hawaii. That was what? Have you seen the video t- from Tyler's Dive of the giant it's like stingray? like a week oh, ago I thought or you were so. saying Scott Van Pelt. No. But no, I will go look for that video it's soon. A giant thing. Tyler also has video of Scott Van Pelt squ- swimming by in a Speedo, but the stingray's better. I remember somebody getting a picture with Scott Van Oh, Spencer Keatsman. With him at so long when he can't. No, 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 no. That was a college game day guy. Uh, Lee Corso. Ward. Who's the guy that does the like the specials? Ward. Wardjahowski. Gene Wardjahowski. Yeah, yeah. That guy. Him. I think it was him. Anyways, yeah. not to go off track. We do that a lot. From AZ Cat 5 did you watch any of the Women's World Cup? Is it just me, or do you also find it equal or more entertaining than the men's dun, team? Dun, 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 Let me give my quick thing. No, oh, sorry. You, oh. Do you want to start? No. I'll just start. Okay, you go. I didn't really watch much of it. I watched the final until they scored two goals. I'm like, turn it off. Like It's, it's over. They're going to win. I think it's impressive how good the U.S. team is compared to the rest of the world. Um, now, hold on. But, I, have, I have a theory about this. Contrary to what some want to say about the United States and female opportunity, I think this emphasizes how many more opportunities they have in the United States than they do around the world. This We're talking about places where soccer is important, but not if you're a girl, yeah. not if you're a female. You, you can't play it or you don't get the resources for it. The United States, is, it's been embraced. And in many ways, I think female soccer, girls' soccer, has been more important culturally than men's soccer in the U.S. from a grade, grade school on up. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think it's weird seeing that it's only the fourth World Cup they've won, though. They've only won the last two, and then they had a 15-year drought or something between the – or 16-year drought between their, their second one and then the first one before it. Um, but they're really good. They are. I mean, it's – It'll be interesting to see in four years if anybody topples them. But I think that they've kind of built this dynasty, especially coming off the loss in 2011 to, to Japan. Um, I don't know how they'll be stopped, basically. Let me preface my comment by saying I am very, you know, number one, obviously happy that they won. You want your country to win. And two, I think the U.S. women's national team is an incredibly impressive team, and, and obviously they're all very talented at what they do, so so hat tip to them. I didn't watch hardly any of it. I mean, I'm talking seconds of it for two reasons. Number one, I just don't like soccer that much. I'm not a soccer person. And in a 48-month cycle, that four years of, of – no, sorry, that's the Olympics. What's the World 48 Cup? 48-month cycle? What's so the, how, how many years between the World Cups? Four. four. Okay, so yeah, yeah, it's so same 40, as Olympics. Okay, sorry. 48-month cycle. For 47 of them, I don't really watch soccer. For one month of that 48, I'm not going to pretend like I'm a diehard soccer fan, and I'm not going to pretend like not really caring about the World Cup makes me hate America. Some people seem to think that if you're not that interested in the World Cup, if you're not that interested in the Olympics, suddenly you hate America for some reason. So, no, I don't really care that much about it. That's why I didn't watch it that much. Number two, it got political. Yeah. All because of Megan Rapone, R- Rapone? Rapino. Rapino. I don't even know her last name because that's how much she annoyed me. Number one, it was all about the stuff with Trump. Then it was about how she got mad with the men's team playing after them and taking away the spotlight. That, that really bothered Nobody me. cared. Yeah, people watched the men's game, but people were still like, hot damn, the women won the gold medal today. That's yeah, really just, cool. I think it's more of a, a FIFA thing than a U.S. thing. Yeah. It's, not about, it's more about... The women should have had their own stage on that Sunday instead of having 
two other games competing. I mean, they weren't at the same time, but I get the argument. I argue the, the opposite. B- if you got engaged with the women's team and you enjoyed it, maybe it's good for soccer in the U.S. that you continue to watch through the day because there was an in- international game, right, in the right. middle? Right. Well, the yeah, in the well there was the Copa America final. How long between. can you celebrate something, especially if you're not there? Uh, that that one bothered me. Look, I, She single-handedly uh, turned me away from Unfortunately, world. politics has been inserted into everything, and you get called names if you're on a different side of politics from someone and it's just it's tearing us apart but that's a whole different topic i don't like do politics on on here i didn't watch any of it and it had nothing to do with soccer or when i just never actually thought of it you know just it like riley i'm not engaged with soccer i have nothing against soccer i think it's a beautiful sport i just you know that final was that started at 10 a.m yeah it's Um, it's tough to watch Especially if you, you're used to American sports times. Everything's in prime time. Yeah. You have to be, the way I compare it, if you're a soccer fan that watches a lot of European soccer throughout the year, you're probably a pretty good baseball fan that wants to watch afternoon baseball midweek. I mean, that's really the only real comparison. If you're sitting at your office on a Wednesday or a Thursday watching the Braves or the Cubs or whoever else is playing, um, you know, you're probably more interested in watching sports in the afternoon or more aware of it. But if you're just watching sports at night, that's kind of – yeah. you're, you're going to miss out. A couple other thoughts. Well, for, first of all, let me finish off my thought that it was about 1130. I think it was 1130. I realized, oh, crap, the women are on. And then I found it was too nil already. And I'm like, yeah. okay, well. Game over. I'll keep doing what I'm doing, which is nothing important. <laughs> I think I was watching Netflix. Um, uh, now, on another note, Kansas City. Wow. That was impressive. Oh, it was incredible. I think it really established the fact that Kansas City is the epicenter of soccer fandom. Now, the irony being Kansas City had a professional women's team that had to leave town because they, they didn't have any crowd. <laughs> they folded or they moved? They no, moved. I thought they folded. Or they moved somewhere. But anyhow, it's all the same result. They don't have women's soccer in Kansas City. Ironic? Hmm. Uh, but those those images from Power and Light are, are powerful. They're amazing. Now, the last time I really watched soccer, when the men were in the World Cup, and that it was Tanner's first year of opening, and you know I quickly became friends with those guys. But that was in the afternoons and evenings, and it was a fun drinking yeah. environment. I'm not going to be in a bar at 10 a.m. Uh, you know, on a regular day just drinking. That's that's reserved for Sunday fun days, but that didn't even start till 11. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, but I now the final thought here is. This World Cup connected with America. I think this World Cup advanced the uh, image of soccer as a as a potential major sport throughout our culture more than any other soccer event. The ratings show it. I think fifteen was still bigger than this year. Mm-hmm. Well, it's. Yeah, I think it was. People were really engaged with this. I think it's good. and But in some ways, I think it just feeds us. There are a lot of little girls out there who want to be soccer players now, and that's a good thing. That's a good sport to learn when you're a kid. And back to the, the power and light thing, 10,000 people going there, a lot of that is more of the campaign of trying to get World Cup games when the World Cup comes to the United States in uh, 2026. Um, and for forever, regardless of the tournament, whether it's, you know, Gold Cup or Kansas City to get Gold Cup games this year, but all the major games that get played in the United States that the, the U.S. is a part of, Kansas City gets snubbed for everything. You know, previous World Cup, um, you know, all the other tournaments, Kansas City doesn't really get anything, but the demand is there, and this is kind of showing that, hey, Arrowhead deserves to have games. How many venues do you need for a World Cup? Um, so previously probably about 12, but that was with 32 teams. I don't know if it's this next World Cup or the one after. It'll expand to 48 teams, so you'll need some more venues. But then 2026, you split it between three countries. It's U.S., Canada, and Mexico. So Mexico will get three stadiums, Canada three stadiums, United States probably about 10. Um, but if they distribute the, the games out, um, geographically, if there's balance there, Kansas City should be in a good spot. And even if they don't get any games, um, there's going to be 48 countries in the United States needing training bases, places to stay. Kansas City has 
Incredible. you know, two, they just built the brand new um, sporting KC practice facility, and their old one is still obviously going to be used or use it's usable. Um, so there's multiple places in Kansas City, um, depending on how the uh, the draws go and if and travel. If if people are centrally located, um, Kansas City is in a good spot. I would like to see soccer try to avoid the New Yorks and LAs with that. Just kind of get lost in the shuffle. Maybe Chicago be okay, but I would like to see maybe those games with possibly the exception of a place like Buffalo or Seattle that lies right across the border from Canada, just right down the middle of America. You know? I mean, yeah. just cut it right down the middle of America and uh, through Texas, maybe Phoenix, because it'd be lovely in the summer. Just, you know, and have those games. Like, really it's a connect. dry heat. It's a dry heat, yeah. It's a dome. Uh, connect the U.S. bordering or bridging Canada and Mexico, I think it'd be cool to have them just kind of yeah. right through. That's it. They won't yeah. do it, though. No, they'll, they'll do New York and L.A., probably all the games. Yeah, the Rose Bowl, probably get a game. MetLife, the rest don't really matter, unfortunately. I think you need to be in Miami, culturally. That's yeah. good. I mean, yeah, there'd be some places like that. Um, next question is from I Like Pickles Cat. What brands do you use exclusively? Oh, that's a good question. Um, mm. we're, we're a brand loyal bunch. Zach's probably the most brand loyal. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Zach, Zach is a product brand loyal. Like, if he likes one brand, but they make like two, he'll only wear one type of thing from that brand if he likes it. And he has problems with other types of materials. Do you have an example? I'm not like, saying I disagree. Like, just, t- I don't like Nike t shirts. You're oh like, yeah, you're like oh this Nike T-shirt. That's that's you compared to last year's model or whatever like that. You you're just yeah like, yeah. You can't like Nike makes different stuff for different stores. You can't go to J.C. Penney and expect it's the same stuff you're going to get at Academy. That's what I'm saying. Um, for jeans, I only wear buckle jeans, but that's because of the way they're made. Right. I have pretty large legs, and <laughs> other jeans just don't fit me. And the way the buckle makes their jeans, they do fit me. So I wear buckle jeans only. I only wear Nike shoes with the exception of, like, nice flip-flops. You know, like, flip-flops can go with khaki shorts or something like that because Nike doesn't really make those, to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, That's pretty much it, honestly. Nike shoes and socks for me, probably. Ray-Ban sunglasses. Oops, I just hit the mic. Oh, yeah, bang. I only drink Bang Energy. Mm-hmm. I don't. I won't drink another Monster. I don't drink Red Bull. If, if oh, no. oh, re- yeah, Red Bull for me. Yep. Yeah, but you bought a, like twenty Red Bulls and didn't drink any of them here. <laughs> they were here for months. But I don't buy any other energy drinks. That's fair. Okay. I'll, I'd, I'll sooner go without caffeine than I will. Yeah. Oh yeah. D- Fitz is holding up a Dasani bottle. If we're buying cheap wa- bottled water, it's Dasani. I just prefer Dasani water. I, I it's so too. much better than. Aquafina, yeah. it really, it really is. Deja Vu is okay, but um, I put uh, I'm blanking off the name of it. It's what I have at home right now. Uh, I'll get it. Nestle, no. no. Dylan's, Kroger brand, no. Oh, deodorant. Well, there's Ozarka, but it's it's a it's like Ozarka, but it's different. They're the same bottling. I can't. Huh. Think. I guess uh, Ice Mountain is that it? My yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Ice, uh, across the board on like cosmetic stuff. You know, I use yeah. the same toothpaste, Old same spice. body wash, same. Now, I'm not saying those are all the same brand. I'm saying, like, the same I have thing. a body wash. I use that. I have a shampoo. I use that. Yeah. Um, I, too, am brand loyal. But I bet you guys can name the brand that I'm most loyal to. Hmm. Five Hour Energy. I, that seemed like the good one, but I knew that wasn't it. That's... What's the name of your shirt company? No. Uh, Okay. Where do we stay at? Every oh, oh, it's Hilton yeah, Hotels. Hilton. We'll sooner pay a hundred dollars. I mean, that's an exaggeration. No, because we one time we couldn't, and we stayed. You guys stayed at La Quinta. We'll pay more if it's not an outrageous amount more to stay at a Hilton. Because there's a difference. Hilton hotels are really nice. <laughs> I guess I prefer to fly American, but that's also because I have a card and we get free bags. I now pr- prefer to fly not United. 
<laughs> yes. United lost a lot of business from this one little company. They owe me 20 bucks now. The they, Wi-Fi crapped out on me. They they screw over their customers for yeah, profit do. all the time. Most most of them do. Can you imagine? Can you believe this? Seven-hour flight, big plane, a 343, you know, whatever you call that, Zach, yeah. professional name for it. No TV screens in the seats. That's United having updated their fleet. Well, it might be unbelievable. It might be updated to where they're getting rid of them to save weight. That's unbelievable. Plus, you have your own screens. Yeah, yeah they have little There's a lot of that going on. You know, one of our uh, Hawaii Airlines flights, um, they actually gave gave us a uh, iPad. Oh, that's kind of cool to use, and it probably does save a lot of weight. Other than that, though, I'm not really brand loyal to a lot of things. I'm. I'm a pretty simple guy when it comes to, like, clothes and things like that. I'm brand loyal to Life is Good products. Almost all my hats and a lot of t- most of my T-shirts are Life is Good. I'm brand disloyal to Adidas. I'll never purchase Adidas unless it's, like, like I can't. The last Adidas thing I purchased was in high school, and it was a New York Knicks shooter shirt just because I really, really liked that shirt, and Adidas is the official or was the official NBA brand at that time. That's the last thing Adidas I bought. Watch 24-7 and Adidas create a partnership. Well, Rivals would have to disband, right? Are they still together? I don't yeah, think. I think so. Surely they, they wouldn't, wouldn't sponsor necessarily. both, would they? I mean, I don't, Nike I don't, does the NBA and the NFL. I don't think 24-7 does as the yeah. yeah. So, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Next question is from per- Purple Poncho Villa. You can change one thing about Willie. What would it be? This can be his actions, his outfits, you name it, or no change at all. I hadn't read this question, but I will go there. You start it. Animal limbs. He needs fur (laughs) and a tail. There's no better thing to say. It makes zero sense. He's half man, half animal. He's Willie, human, wildcat, wildcat. He's literally the definition of every man a wildcat. (laughs) <laughs> it's just some stupid 50s experiment that went wrong in the basement of a hern <laughs> guys those initial willies were scary you can sit here and complain about purdue pete being scary you can complain about the providence fryer guy being absurdly intimidating how about pistol pete pistol pete is With a scary giant MF-er. plastic head He's there's like... nothing that makes less sense in college sports than willie wildcat and it's not Willie the Wildcat. Thank you. It's Willie Wildcat. And K State marketing has definitely K-State laxed needs on to that. Remember that they forget. They they hire people that aren't from K State. Exactly. It's but, in the media guide. His name is Willie Wildcat. There's <sighs> nothing like. I'm sorry, K State fans. I'm sorry if you love the uniqueness of Willie. I'm sorry if you have some fond memories with Willie as a kid. So do I. It makes no sense. No sense at all. You can't. There's not even a backstory. Like it'd be one thing if they're like, "Oh yeah, um, he was mutated." Yeah, be like, okay, it was that's, a bad science experiment. You'd be like, "Okay, that's stupid," but at least there's a reason for it. Yeah. Why I left the question in here? Oh my god, it's 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 so stupid. And the Baylor mascots last year when they they made the video before the Baylor game, yeah, they made they, fun of it. They sent him sleeves. They're like, like, they go like this. And they're like, oh. He that, does. What's wrong with his arms? And they sent him some sleeves because that was spectacular. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> Northwestern did it. Like you can't say there's that it looks bad or something. Northwestern has a full body wildcat. Arizona. Arizona has a they full body great. wildcat. They do. They look spectacular. And unfortunately, at this point, they can't change it. No. Oh, it's they can. All people, the all older generation, go crazy. Cray. You talk about it. change the football helmet. They'd be oh okay. We'll do that for a few games. Give Willie furry arms, people will riot. The problem because you'd have to change the head. I don't think there's a. I really have a feeling there's no body that goes with that head. At this point, it'd have to be like sleek, not really furry. Just so you would have to go find a different head. You'd have to reinvent it, which people would lose their bananas over. Well, I think it's worth it. I don't know that people have bananas. I just combined two different sayings into that. By the way, lose their marbles, go bananas. <laughs> lose, lose their, their bananas. bananas. <laughs> also, one thing I would like to change: the car. Either get an updated car or lose it. The the little thing he rides in on? Yeah. What's the point? 
He doesn't yeah. even ride around the parking lot anymore, does he? I don't know. I mean, I guess we're I not never, I never fully got equipped to say one. that. No, no, I never got that one. Here's what I, I would – I have a much different take than you guys. I would keep him exactly the same except for one thing. Willie doesn't talk, but I think Willie – should start whispering to people. <laughs> like, go up to the other basket. We're going to screw you up. <laughs> go sign a little kid's autographs. Your mom digs me. <laughs> <laughs> just really creepy things. I, um, that's just me, though. I hope someone at K State is listening to this podcast because it's. I don't think people realize how much people get made, how much K State gets made fun of for that. And how it makes zero sense. Like, KU's mascot is a mythical bird. It does not exist. It wears shoes. And yet it still makes more sense than Willy Wildcat. Yes. I went there. Wow. I just went there. Boy. Also, why is Willy always white? You Again, another how, thing you can't change at this How point. can you defend oh, that you in can. a... You can. I, I, seriously, I, I just don't think there's ever been... It's time. I mean, I don't think it's ever well, been, oh, you're the wrong color. I think it's just people haven't tried out or haven't. Well, I think. Maybe, maybe back in the day, someone of color tried out and they didn't pick them. But now, I don't think that'd be an issue at all if someone of color tried out and they were entertaining and met all the standards. I think it would be. And I don't, I don't mean it to be race like K-State's racist. They don't want black people doing their willy. I think it's more like, look, mascots, we all know they're fake, but for kids, you try to paint the illusion that the mascot is real. That there's not four different guys who do the job. Exactly. And so how can you change not only body appearance, but skin color? I think you might have tripped on to the most tangible reason why to cover up the limbs. Yeah. It would be an intriguing, like, lawsuit, just like legal case of is is a pretend yeah. character who wears a mask but doesn't have furry arms or legs but he's always white is it discrimination k-state's defense against that is we're trying to trick people into thinking he's real well <laughs> like, that's the only case here's the argument is you're trying to trick people into thinking there's only one it's just the same guy but their body types are so different. That's an absurd argument. Yeah, you got one that looks like he's been lifting all day, and another guy with no calf muscles. <laughs> I, I mean, they they don't even come close to looking the same. You know who they are. I I think that's a valid argument why you should give them some type of sleeve. Yeah, that, I guess. Think about Pistol Pete. His hands are visible. He they they have, white well, too. Here, they have two different Pistol Pete's, I know. and they announce who they are. It's very weird. You can go online yeah. and find out who Pistol Pete is. I think that would be cool. I it's a supreme honor at West Virginia to be the Mountaineer. Yeah, and I don't know who they picked, but a female was a finalist this year. Yeah, really? It's a well, they have two of them. She had a crappy beard. I was gonna say, can you do it with a beard? <laughs> um, so, I think it'd be cool. I, I I understand back in the day why you didn't let people know who was Willie because there was one and the rivalry with some schools was so intense back then, people would kidnap people. Now they don't do that because it actually counts. <laughs> you know? It's a real it's crime legally now. kidnapping. I mean, back in the day, you, you would steal someone's composite from their fraternity or sorority. Now that's a felony offense. You don't do that, or you shouldn't, because it's a felony offense. Is it a yeah. felony? It happens. It's it like over $1,500. Yeah, they're expensive as hell. It still happens. Oh. Flags, composites, it happens. Probably not as often, right. unless it stopped in the last four years. The pike composite what kind of got destroyed basically with graffiti and stuff. And it was like back in the day, it was like a couple thousand dollars to replace it. If you're a frat, what kind of frat is prosecuting the people that stole right. their composites? Nobody's ever doing anything with that frat ever again. That's what I'm saying. No, the house core is the alumni are that have to pay the bill. That's right. what I'm saying. Is that happens? I don't think anybody gets in trouble for it. Yeah, I think it's like. A gentleman's agreement. Well, let's take it we this way. I, I don't know if they still do it, but if you painted the Beta Rock, they'd beat the crap out of you. I now, know. Beta you, pledges still have to guard the rock. I know that. <laughs> yeah, but I think they're probably a little more diplomatic about how they handle it yeah. instead of felony assault. We're, I'm not even in a frat, and I want to go paint their rock now. <laughs> I know, right? When my friend was a Beta Pledge, I told him I was going to go mess with it, and he said, please don't. Like, he was sincere. He was like, he's like, I don't care. Like... Yeah, you can mess with me, whatever. 
don't go paint that rock, please. I'm like, because stuff happens to the pledges that are grabbing like, it. All right, <laughs> understood. That's it. Uh, no. No. Uh, from CCL. Who put uh, this no. together? <laughs> uh, no. He says. <laughs> We're like halfway done. I'm kidding. We got two more. CCL oh, 27. God, we do. Uh, we're, at, we're at 43 minutes on this segment. <laughs> Yikes. What's Aggieville been like this summer? And you've mentioned Aggieville isn't doing the business it used to. What could be done to fix that, if anything? Uh, he or she enjoys our perspectives on the Manhattan community. I can't honestly attest to it that much because... Uh, Aggieville's fine in the summer because all the people in town that thinks Aggieville is Compton during the school year will venture <laughs> into it in the summer when those hideous students are gone. And those same people don't realize if you go to Aggieville at 8 o'clock on a Friday night to eat a late dinner, you can park on the street. <laughs> that there's no students in Aggieville until about 10 or 11 in the numbers that would take up all the parking. I just haven't gone that much because I've been gone a lot, you know, either going home or going to different things in the summer. And when I'm here on weekdays, you know, I don't necessarily need to be getting drunk on a Tuesday. He's all grown up. But I live, I know, right? I just do it at my place now. <laughs> but I, li- I live really far from, like, I used to live far from Aggieville. I live really far from Aggieville now. I bet you that Uber is almost $20 to get me home. It might be now. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm in the 50 It cost range. me 10 when I lived back out there. Yeah, when they uh, when they tub. boosted the Uber rates a year or so ago, it it changed it dramatically for me. It'll be 15 to 20 bucks about, for me to get home, so I mean, it's still about 12, 15 bucks. Again, I'm not mm-hmm. saying that 15, yeah, 20 dollar Uber or is so. yeah. unreasonable. It's a whole hell of a lot better than a $10,000 Oh, DUI. there's no doubt about it, but, but it I just time. I don't want to pay it every weekend and right. it starts adding yeah. up. So I can't really speak to it. I know it was fun when I was there a lot last summer, and i got to imagine it's probably about the same now. I also don't have as many friends here as I had a couple years ago. Well, the second part of the question is the damn city needs to get serious about Aggieville, and there's this underlying, this undercurrent of disdain for Aggieville in this town amongst the, quote, townies. There just is. When something comes up for downtown, which we're a part of now, hell yes, let's do that. Let's build a parking garage that no one parks in. (laughs) Aggieville literally needs parking, desperately. In fact, they're getting ready to put up a garage that will add up like add like nine spots total. So for two years while they're building the, the new hotel, there'll be less parking in Aggieville. The one right there on Bluemont between... Uh, the world's worst place, Starbucks, and <laughs> where the car wash was, that lot's gone. That is going to be a hotel with parking underneath it. There'll still be some public parking, a few more stalls than what that lot had, and the rest will be hotel parking. That eventually would be great for Aggieville because you did gain parking, and you gain people that are staying in Aggieville who will definitely go to those hotel, the restaurants and bars and those things. But they desperately need uh, they need garages. They need a small one down there at the far east end of Aggieville by the by Hunam. They desperately yep. need a small one right there. And they need a big one, preferably over between what was Varney's and, and Dirty Dogs where I fall down. <laughs> that lot needs to be a giant parking garage. Stick out Burger King. Burger King should have some of their parking seized because they will literally put a security guard out there. To guard their parking in the middle of, like, at noon on a Friday, and three people are eating at Burger King, but everyone else wants to park. And they're like, sir, this is, like, I, he's come up, sir, this is Burger King parking. I'm like, okay, cool, I'll go to Burger King then, dude. Burger if it's King that sucks. big of a deal. Burger King sucks. Did you eat the tacos yet? I What? Yeah, they have $1 tacos yeah. now. What? Yeah, I saw that ad today. Um, not excited about them. We'll try them just so I can criticize them. Speaking of trying things, are we going to try the Cheetos sandwich from KFC? Is it the Flamin' Hot? No, it's just regular Cheetos. How about we do that for dinner? How about we grab that and we grab a Burger King taco and see how bad it is? Because I feel like both of them are All awful. Right. I'm out on that. Ugh, hmm. I'm going to have a stomachache tonight. Let's get the last one. Let's go. <laughs> You're so done. I'm done. <laughs> From PowerCat Ryan. Who put together these damn questions? So- damn soccer question. Took up like who 10 is, minutes. Who is the next GPC employee to go to Hawaii? <laughs> uh, that'd be either you or Fritch. Wally could probably pop up and go. He has a kid. Yeah, he has a newborn kid. Actually, his job might be like, yep, I'm in Hawaii for some surfing competition. So <laughs> There you go. It might, yeah. He definitely can't take he that He does go places. He, sometimes he'll be doing... 
I'm going to be in Spain for two weeks. Sorry, guys. I'm out of pocket. I, and totally off topic, <laughs> he works for Garmin, and those Garmin products are badass. Those new watches that are really expensive are really cool. They did like a high-end watch that are really cool. Yeah, if you're making uh, me guess, it's probably Wally for work. <laughs> well, let's just change the question. Who will be the next uh, GPC employee to go to Las Vegas? Fitz, because he took my beat from me. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Riley Gates, basketball beat writer, comma, except for when it matters. Except in <laughs> Vegas. Actually, this doesn't matter. Because <laughs> because what happens, and this is a serious question, what happens if the basketball game is at the exact same time as the football game? Nobody gives a damn about the basketball you, game. And you're just not even going to the game. Regardless, the content is getting buried. But I think me watching the football game and doing my post-game stuff is more important. I think oh, we're yeah. paying to put you in Vegas, though. Not paying. Go to the game. <laughs> Not paying for the hotel. So he I, use, I use points. <laughs> yeah, we I, have a property. Please, please let them be separate times, and let the basketball game be first, so we can just bear. I mean, like I don't mean it as a dig at the basketball team. Just the football content does a lot better. I didn't like the second game of the year or fourth game of the year or something. It's the second. Yeah, it's really I mean, early. Yeah, not including exhibitions, but um, yeah, let's just let the basketball game be like eleven, the football game be at like two or one, or they well, both at eleven. That work that way because They're both at eleven, and then you just get your basketball. It'd be nine o'clock in Vegas. Yeah. It wow. So, yeah. so you almost need the opposite. You almost need the football game at eleven and the basketball game at seven Vegas time. So it'd be nine o'clock here. Wait, I thought we wanted basketball first. Well, well it's we not would. gonna be not because it's two hours because. Of yeah, time change. We'll but just we'll just let Zach's videos bury the basketball. <laughs> yes, we'll get it covered. We're go, we're gonna be at both places. We will figure it out. I'll give my buddy Brad a tape recorder to go interview Coach Weber. Oof, I'm tired. That was a long podcast. That was a long overtime, folks. This is why I don't put together the questions on a regular basis. But I give Riley a break because he's on Hawaii time. He's still, he's falling asleep right now, and. There's no one actually listening to the podcast at this point, so what's the matter? We'll talk to you next week, I think. I don't know how we're going to handle Big 12 Media Days. We'll do something. Maybe I'll just have you on from there, both days. I like that. We're planning on the air again. We do that a lot. Power Cat Podcast. All rights reserved. GoPowerCat.com and Spirit Street Publishing.